of when we were like, hey, what, what do you, which one's next? Which one do you think? It's kind of fun. Okay. Cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Z Engineering Podcast. I'm Adam. I'm Brian. And we're going to do another Hit List episode. Hit this List one. episode just number two. 20 minutes, half hour. I don't know however long it takes us to bang through just a couple of topics off of our list of, you know, stuff I thought of while I was pooping. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's fair. Yes. Things, things happen. Not even a minute in and I'm making people I'm uncomfortable. Through. I you're hope. making you're making me uncomfortable, <laughs> but poop. four Just other people, I think everybody poops, Brian. Yes, they do. Everybody Especially poops. you. You seem to be pooping an abnormal amount of time when I am talking to you. It's a it's it's a good time. To, isn't there actually a hit list item about this? Yep, there is. <laughs> <laughs> Being in the bathroom while on the phone. Should we just do that one? Yep, I guess so. Negates Fair enough. The topic we just talked about before we started. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to that one next. Why don't you uh, uh, kick us off? But on how this can one? we not ride a segue like that? King, King of the porcelain. Um, porcelain. I just grind? don't. I. It's okay. Fair? So I. I get. I get. Grown? I don't understand when people find out that you're in the bathroom while you're talking to them on the phone. And their response is, ew. Like, I didn't take them in the bathroom with me. It's weird, isn't it? Particles aren't going to come through the phone and touch your ear. I don't have an ooh response, but I have a ugh, awkward response. And I don't know why. It's a good like, question. It's, just, it's, you have to, it's like, is it like when I tell you not to think about your parents having sex and automatically you have to and it's awkward and you, you just don't want to no, have doesn't... someone say that? That doesn't even come close to how awkward it is when someone tells me they're in the bathroom. Because you just did this right before the episode. You called me and then said you were taking a piss. And I was like, ah, oh, call me back? It's weird. What is it? I don't know. I is wipe it... my phone off after I take it in just... the bathroom. It's not like... You know, I it's wipe not my a... phone off. I'm taking care Are of the only possible it? issue, which is that I have, you know, sanitizing wipes I use on my on my yes i don't believe that you use sanitizing wipes on your phone every time I you're take in the care of the particulate i don't every time phones but, are probably I really do, dirty you have them they're super dirty super phones dirty. money and like I would subway not, handles i would not put someone else's phone in my mouth anyway <laughs> so it's out there there is no tube through which the poop particles can travel to get on you so the only thing that could possibly be gross about it to someone on the other side it's just that they have to think about the fact that you poop <laughs> and if you don't use your smartphone while you're pooping you're missing out yeah you're weird there's something That's wrong with saying. you if you don't or there's something yeah. wrong with me no if you don't what the hell do you do in there <laughs> what did people used to do in there <laughs> newspapers what did i used to do in there magazines oh my god I do remember Think. before smartphones, I used to argue with people that the goal of the bathroom was to get in and out as fast as possible, and totally different now. Now the goal is to stay in there as long as possible so I can continue reading things and not be distracted <laughs> and feel like I'm it is. I'm legitimized reading crap in the middle of the day because I'm like using the restroom at the same time. It is one of the few places where people don't <laughs> feel free to interrupt you. Absolutely, unless you call them. Or they oh, you're going to you? get, you're get... <laughs> oh, uh, 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 occupied. Uh, I'll be done in a minute. Ah. <laughs> and then they leave you alone and you can hang out for <laughs> oh, another 15. Oh, sorry. So I didn't know anyone was in there. Ah. It's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, what was the topic we were going to do? Uh, go playing AI. Go playing a uh, AI. Okay. G-O playing AI. So I think it's AI called. AI playing Go. I think it's called AlphaGo, but Google mm -hmm. has an artificial intelligence uh, machine that recently beat, I think, the European Go champion at Go. European champion. Five games straight. Yeah, I, I only know that because now they're setting it up with the <laughs> world champion. But what's what's interesting about this is, like, you know, computers have played chess and they've beaten champions before and they've played Jeopardy. But chess 
has a finite number of combinations by which the game can be played. And we've been at it for so long that there are, are literally books that have all of these outlined for you already. So it's possible to load a database with all of those possible moves and possible reactions to the moves and then have that computer play chess pretty effectively. Go has enough pieces and enough slots that if you run through all the possible combinations by which Go can be played, they say that there are more combinations of those pieces than there are particles in the universe. Yeah, I buy that. I don't think we can quite calculate an entire game of chess either, but it can get like 10, 15 moves out on humans, which right. is usually enough to lock somebody up. Yeah. What is it? Go has what, like 50 pieces on the board or something? Uh, something like that. It's black pieces. Oh, you and put white pieces, pieces down as you play, right? Right. It's kind of yeah. like Othello. Did you ever play um, that? And there's something like 50 slots. And the point is to, uh, if you can encircle the other person's pieces with you your pieces, it. then they then they're they're yeah. changed to your color and locked okay. off. Okay. Cool. Um, and the the game the goal is to have the board filled, and whoever has the most pieces wins. So when you say go playing AI or I, more accurately, I guess AI artificial intelligence playing go. Did it teach itself how to play? This is what's crazy. So in order to do this, instead of just having a database full of all the possible moves and how they should respond and it being able to ping that database really fast, they wrote a learning program that told the computer the rules of go and then just had it start running scenarios and learning them basically cool <clears throat> and so it was able to beat a human because it can play 12 million games of go a day all day while we're you know waiting for the other guy to get his bag of stones out right. so we can <laughs> play <laughs> which is all humans do i mean that's that's what computers learning things is you can't just program a computer to have all the experiences that a human has had over 30 years it needs to have those experiences it needs that data it needs that information to make a decision to calculate something we think of uh people talk about artificial intelligence all the time and they're usually talking about artificial human intelligence and it took 35 years for me to get to this level of knowledge and experience and intelligence to be able to do things you didn't just dump it in there respect well, and 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 <laughs> Well, and then this is a, we'll do a separate episode on this because I'm trying to line up a guest who can talk about it. But part of the, part of the struggle with AI is, AI is also artificial intelligence. Intelligence. Is, is intelligi. There you go. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. <laughs> That's what I was flailing for. It's like, we, we don't, we don't just keep a registry of everything that's ever happened to us. We we remember only what's necessary to be able to reconstruct it on an ongoing basis. And that's such a massively complex problem. That the only, yeah. We don't, we don't even really know. Some people keep a record of everything. There are people who can tell you every single thing they've ever done and like what time of day it was. Yo, there, totally there's like the capacity that. there. So your brain's right. doing some weird shit for sure. Right. Um, I think we underestimate the value of partial pieces of information. I'm looking in my room right now and there is like an infinite amount of information coming at me that in some level I'm recording it all, even though uh, I was on a podcast with Kerpelman, I'm still recording like what lights were on, what colors were going right. on, sounds outside, like tons of information. It's overlooked when we think about computers just kind well, of. Well, and then a lot of it is computers ignored smarter? also. Like that's one of the interesting things about perception and knowledge mm. is there's a, there's there's stuff happening around you all the time that you just, because it's not helpful for survival and life, you just don't even process, at least consciously. You're, you're not aware of it until it's like sometimes a thing blinks and then you go, oh shit, there's a thing over there. Like, but until it blinked, it wasn't relevant for your brain to be conscious of it. So it doesn't, you're not even aware that it's there. This is a funny, it's, it's funny because this comes up in law all the time, right? Because we use witnesses for cases and witness testimony is, notorious and unreliable <laughs> it's horrible humans are horrible because we're really data. bad at noticing things that yeah. aren't per, like that don't pertain to our survival and so like the best witness you can get is somebody that's like i remember that day because it was my birthday <laughs> and i was looking exactly that direction and watching that lady when he came and robbed her because she had a funny hat on 
like when you can get a witness that can lay out details like that, like here are the reasons I was actively paying attention to that thing. That's the best witness you can get. But somebody that was like, yeah, I was standing on that corner. I, you know, I, I kind of, they're useless, whatever they're ma- ma- mostly useless. Cause our brains, <laughs> our brains spend a great deal of effort making up information as well. We fill in stuff that we're missing. Like for instance, our brain fills in all of the time during the day that you're blinking. Do you consciously perceive blacked out moments all day, like every second? No, your brain fills that in. Your right. brain fills in the hole in your eye where you can't see because they're, it's connected to your, the back of your eye socket. There's all kinds of stuff your brain just makes up all day. And so it makes up all that shit. The guy was but wearing a hat. I don't know. It was blue. Because Wait, was it red? we're doing oh, yeah, that all red. the time, we're able to process things really, really quickly. And so one of the reasons that this comes up all the time in conversations where people are afraid of Skynet and the Terminator being real life, like we're still so far off of that because it's like, it's a big deal that they made a computer that can learn how to play Go, (laughs) but it's still so far away from being able to go through the process that you just described in order to perceive and react and persist and and actually f- like functionally do things yeah. like the only real head start that computers and Skynet would have is that they're all interconnected. So like when you hit a pothole down in San Diego in your car, I, I don't know that you hit a pothole, but if we're connected, like all the self-driving cars will be eventually, mm-hmm. then the I will know driving terminator pothole that there's a pothole down there. And so that's like an interesting difference, but it does, you know, we should terminators should be an episode topic for sure i have a lot to say about terminators yeah. let's do it we'll do I, a whole separate I encounter them in dreamscape quite a bit but let's get to the real moral here <laughs> the real moral is i can't believe they didn't call it the gobot the gobot you remember the gobots mm, vaguely they were like they were like they were like a no they were a bootleg they were like some other toy companies that that's not Hasbro's answer to the Transformers oh and they didn't catch on were they're they like, less expensive bo- oh yeah they totally <laughs> they were they were small and less expensive I don't I I don't know if they transformed they might have all been race cars or something I I vaguely Transformers are pretty awesome anyway, <laughs> GoBots so. You'll never beat a computer at Go anymore. Ever again. You know, I had my first experience oh, with... how much processing comp- power that actually takes. Like, I would guess almost none. I would so think beating you, you in Go is you probably... You never beat... Beating me in Go is, is easy. <laughs> I'm not good at it. Beating everyone listening. <laughs> I can't imagine it's... it's uh. Well, shit, who knows? You're right. Maybe the, the best people in the world. I shouldn't make that comment probably wouldn't be a big deal if it didn't take a lot of processing power it would have been done already <laughs> <laughs> but the bigger generally speaking bigger thing that's 99 percent of the population when we my calculator. when we built a computer that could win at jeopardy and we built a computer that could win at chess we did it by preemptively loading that computer up with all the knowledge that we could pack into it and the ability to query it quickly to try to win at jeopardy um and go with go there's there's too many the only way to do it was to build an algorithm that can learn how to play go and then just have it iterate there was no way that we could just go and here's a combination picture here's a combination take a picture here's a combination take a picture here are the parameters of what you should do like we just told the computer here's how you play go okay run and then just it it just ran all day until we were like, it seems to be good enough at Go that it could probably do something monumental. And then they had it play against this human and it it won. Yeah, that's just kind of how it's going to be. We'll just that's wake up crazy. one day and uh, Google will be making us breakfast in bed before it murders us. At least we get breakfast in bed. I know. I, I assume. I assume that's what it's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> be really rude otherwise. Yeah, we have to do a whole separate episode on on AI, like theories of how stuff could, because there's so much, like there's interesting science fiction, there's the different things that like, like, t- like, like the people that are like, well, we just need to teach it compassion, you know, and then there's like, the there's like Asimov's <laughs> laws of robotics. I love this. And- I love the conversation. It forces you to dive into 
uh, what are those other things? When someone says, well, we just teach it to be good. Well, what the hell does that mean? Teach it to not teach it to have compassion, teach it to have morals. And then you're forced to face the reality of those aren't things. What is what? <laughs> that's yeah, just, exactly. That's just a perception like, that you morality made up. isn't a thing that you can just feed into a computer. Like here, have some morality. <laughs> <laughs> like, have a little morality. You're right. It's kind of it's funny because eat this it's, Bible. It's the same thing we we keep getting to on this thing, which is like at some point you, at some point the answers become a question of philosophy and not technology. Always, um, they always get there. Technology makes the conversation more concrete, I feel like. It just allows you to take the philosophy further. But you're right. The question is still, what is what is what does good mean? Yeah. What is good? What is bad? What's a like donut? We're, we're already having to ask that question with self driving cars because what, what do you do? What's what is the car do you teach it that all life is sacred? And then what does it do in the in the event of an accident or in a situation where three people die instead of 20 because a bus and this car with three people in it. Everybody knows the answer to that question, right? It's just different when you're in one of those vehicles. It's so uncomfortable to talk about. (laughs) Yeah, totally. But Hey, that's what we're here for. This is definitely a full episode. But we got to roll. We're not going to do it today. <laughs> this is a good way to test out which things we should do at full episodes. Yeah, of. right. If you guys dig it, tell us, tweet us, whatever. We dig we'll, it. We'll keep going. We dig um, it. We don't need to put on this one. I think we're going to do it. We got. Uh, we got some more time. You want to pick another one? Uh, yeah. Let's do. <clears throat> uh, let's do completely different responsive photography. What's responsive photography? <laughs> responsive photography. Uh, this was a problem we ran into when we were talking about how to... Uh, it goes back to our our, philosoph- our photography. <clears throat> episode, episode number two? Three, two or three? Yeah. Uh, early episode. Long ago. When we were talking about how display technology, sensor technology, all the different things have gotten to a place where you... Like, for example, when you put a, a subtle vignette um, effect on a photo, which is, you know, kind of like the dark edges around like the... Darkening dark, shadow around the edges shadow of the Shadow around the... A lot of Instagram filters do it. You, Almost you, all of them. You'd know it if you saw it. <laughs> Google vignette. It makes things look like Instagram. And, right. And so that is a great example of an effect that on the size of like eight and a half by 11 looks really good on a big photo. It looks really good. When you compress that photo down, like to put it on mobile, you want that vignette to be way more subtle. And so, yeah. Okay. So when you start dealing with a picture, that's going to be squashed down to a smaller screen size, you, you want less of that effect, but it would be a giant hassle to, output a different version of the photo right. with different effects on it given what screen it's going to end up displayed on yeah that's so an we interesting... were having a conversation about how you could possibly make adaptive photo effects so that you can know that if it's going to be on a smaller screen and it's only going to be three inches by two inches then this is the version of the effects that you should it's have. a constant problem that you see online i've actually i've written some software to do this where you use facial recognition I mean, lacking anything else to pick up on in the picture and it identifies the face and then we'll kind of crop based on photo like rules, um, like the rule of third. You just tell it, identify the face, find the center point of the face and now calculate distances depending on what size you need the photo to be and crop it. I think a lot of websites do that on the back end, but wouldn't it be cool Wait, if you could you pass the file that, around? You built that for, you had a, what, what was the... I forget what I was playing with that for. I had a I had a <sighs> process where I had to auto resize images, and I was playing around with facial yeah, but you, stuff but too. you, but you built you did it as part of a broader project that was something about like it was some kind of hot or not thing, wasn't it? <laughs> it might have been. Those are some of my first like learning programming projects. I built hot or not sort of by accident. <laughs> we it made, did some other. It was other stuff. We were reviewing like my remember, photos. I think. Yeah. So we used to do. Like when Brian was learning to program, 
I was still same thing. I was doing higher level stuff and I, I still don't really know how to program, but I would frequently come with like something crazy that I had discovered. And I would say, we're going to sit down for a weekend and we're going to try to build something <laughs> based on this. Um, and we once built something, built something that was, it was on, it was babe stash. I think we <laughs> called it just because uh, somebody stash. had that. I think I had that URL for some reason. I bet. And what we did was scrape. We were playing with the Twitter API and we followed a bunch of porn star. This Twitter might have been accounts. before Twitter had an API. I think we were we were just scraping straight up we're Twitter. Just scraping Twitter? Just scraping the okay. feeds and pulling. Um, yeah. And so the scraping that we described last week, we were just we were testing that out and we were doing it by pulling Twitter feeds. And so we were pulling Every any time these porn stars put up a photo, <laughs> we would scrape it and drop it into a grid. And so on babestash.com, you could see just the most recent 20 photos from like a list of a hundred porn stars. And it actually turned out to be a really funny social exercise interesting. because they're just people. They're just normal people. <laughs> and so it was mostly banal everyday stuff, except every once in a while, there would be a picture that was like, blah, here's my junk. <laughs> right. It was no, it was like, here's it was the beginning of that, my dog and of the, the trend tire. of people sharing what they do all day. <laughs> bizarre. It was a bizarre. But activity. we used to come cool. up with stuff like that all the time where we would come up with some ridiculous way to test out a real technology. <laughs> so like, you were working on the photo manipulation stuff, but you built it into a hot or not thing where you, people, you could pull a picture, figure out where the face was, zoom in, make it uniform. But the, the response to photography thing is still an interesting question because I've, I frequently, like I put up pictures on Facebook that I'm proud of that I took, that I, that I did the editing on. They have subtle effects and they look really good at the, at the full size of my screen. But then in the thumbnails like on, Instagram. on Facebook, they all look like Lots. way too much effects. <laughs> and I look at them and go, ugh. <laughs> it's interesting. It's so weird. someone, it's a weird hey, internet f- problem. Free idea. You guys <laughs> fix that problem before Adobe and you can make some money for a year before Adobe rolls it into their suite and then you're put out of business. <laughs> Score. <laughs> That's the way to do it, Adobe. <laughs> Maybe you could give out some unlimited paid vacation before Adobe, <laughs> before Adobe steals it from you. Oh, good. Oh man, I wonder how you would do that. I guess you could if you if like a CSS thing. You need That's... a responsive format that right. like no, it would need to be kind of like an intelligent. You need file you format, photo format, or it just yeah, the, yeah, the file you need format a different would file have to format. Have... Like it, it, would, have, it would have metadata to, in it yeah. regarding how the effects are meant to be relative to right. the photo, I guess. Or, that or stuff's ex- every pixel. expensive right. in terms of memory usage to store yeah. like Photoshop files with all those layers of effects to then be able to change them in the future. But, you know, that stuff just gets cheaper and cheaper all the time. So ultimately, Maybe we'll have we'll smart there. images. In images the meantime, will be little robots that resize themselves and crop and auto autocorrect and... In the meantime, if you're a photographer, remember that you might want to <laughs> export different pictures <laughs> for different screen sizes. <laughs> Lighten up on that vignette a little bit, you know? That's all I got. <laughs> well, that seems like a good place to end. I feel like it is. Thanks for thanks for hanging out for another one. Uh, hey. Same deal as always. Around here. Catch us wherever you wherever you found us to begin with rate and review on iTunes. You get us at hello at engineeringpodcast.com. If email is your thing. If email and, is your thing. And I'm Adam. Um, Brian Jones. Have a good week. Woo. Everybody. Have a great, great time. <laughs> 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 <laughs>